many ways, I wrote the book having a couple audiences in mind. On the one hand, in the evangelical world, there is a temptation to kind of think everything's great all the time, and if it's bad, it's going to get better. You just have to say God is good. God's good all the time. That's great. And there's really not a lot of space for extended pain.、Um, at the same time, then there are others, and and so kind of this pop evangelicalism. Let's be happy.、Uh, I'm responding to some of that. On the other hand, I'm also responding to some,、um, and I I come from the Reformed tradition. We have a high view of God as sovereign. He is the King. And but there's a temptation there to say God is sovereign. So everything that's happening, He's doing it to you. He thinks everything that's happening to you is a good thing. All that, and without knowing it, it it actually goes against. The tradition, I would say, Scripture, where you can make God the author of evil in a way that Scripture denies. So all of a sudden, we find ourselves taking a few texts from here and there and saying problematic things about God based on those texts, and all of a sudden missing what's utterly clear throughout the whole Bible is that God is holy. He can't be the author of evil. He is this loving, passionate, holy God. And my answer to that. Is when people ask, well, what about evil? What about suffering? What about physical pain? What does God think about that? What is God doing? My answer is actually Jesus, that the eternal Son of God becomes man, takes on real human flesh, becomes one like us in all ways, yet without sin. And to really think through the Son of God embodied, genuinely human. Physical, knowing physical pain, dealing with psychological challenges of friends and betrayal, of isolation and loneliness. Actually, that is a profound thing for someone who's suffering to to contemplate. This is what does God think of my suffering? Well, he he entered into it.、Um, sometimes we're so quick to say, well, it's not the physical death that matters; it's the spiritual. And I want to say, the spiritual is is. Interconnected, you can't understand that apart from the physical death. The, the fact that Jesus literally dies, not figuratively, is a big deal. Actually, enters into the utter forsakenness of death itself. That's the kind of God we're talking about, who genuinely identifies with us in that way, and yet, then, in the power of the Spirit, is raised on the third day, so that now. Our hope is based on on Christ rising, not just some promise that one day will rise, but the fact that Jesus literally, physically rose from the dead. This this is transformative because we have the same Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in us, who promises to raise us.、Um, so it allows the life, death, and resurrection of Christ allows us to be very honest about the genuine brokenness and ache in this world and in our bodies. It、allows us to be honest about the complexity of physical brokenness, emotional brokenness, spiritual brokenness. These things are interconnected in profound ways that are not easily disentangled. But it also allows us to be hopeful that even as we can speak honestly about the pain, we can also speak genuinely and truthfully about the hope that there will be no more tears, there will be no more pain, there will be no more mourning,、um, and that's based not just on a On a vague hope, but on the actual resurrection of Christ.